you're looking to dive into topics on how to live a happier, healthier, more fit, and long lifespan, then you've come to the right podcast. Living the dream with me, Coach Damian Evans. Together, we will explore the topics on all things health, fitness, and wellness. Together, we will be lifelong learners on this journey to living the ultimate dream. What up, Dream Team? Coach D here coming at you from beautiful, sunny San Diego. And welcome back to the Living the Dream podcast, where we finish the week strong by covering how to properly fuel up our bodies based on what works best for us individually in order to reach for our health, fitness, and wellness goals, and in order to live your dream life. Today, we're talking about chocolate. Yes, chocolate is a beloved treat enjoyed in so many various ways. On its own, stirred into a warm drink, or paired with a dessert. Almost everyone loves it, and the people that don't love it, you have to be a little skeptical and a little bit concerned. What's up with this person? What's even more intriguing are the recent studies uncovering its potential health benefits for the heart, for the brain, and the gut. Let's dive into the world of chocolate. The fruit behind the chocolate. It's easy to forget that chocolate comes from the Theobroma cacao tree. The yellow fruits are harvested from the tree and opened to remove the cacao beans inside. The beans are fermented, dried, roasted, husked, and ground to a form of pasty fluid chocolate liqueur, which is the basis of all chocolate products. So can we call chocolate a fruit now? First, let's talk about a bitter drink. The cultivation of the cacao tree traces back over 3,000 years ago to the Maya, Toltec, and Aztec civilizations. They crafted a bitter beverage from cacao beans mixed with spices like chili. This drink carried profound cultural and medicinal significance employed in the treatment of various ailments and shared during marriage ceremonies. And then from drink to bar, like many other plants, cacao beans were brought to Europe from South America around the 16th century by colonists and missionaries. The first exposure to the drink was not a favorable experience for the Spaniards. Deemed just too bitter for the Spaniards, It then became more widely available in the 17th century, but eating chocolate was not in regular production until the mid-19th century. Cacao fruit juice, the flesh of the cacao fruit, is also used in some countries to make a sweet and sour fruit juice. But what's in the bean? Cacao beans contain many nutrients and plant compounds, including, first off, fiber, and then minerals such as magnesium and copper, The cacao beans are also known for its flavanols. There's a flavanol called, I probably will butcher this word, epicatechin, a subclass of polyphenols that are abundant in cacao and linked to numerous health-promoting benefits. They also contribute to the bitter taste of chocolate. Also, proteins. We don't typically eat chocolate for its protein content, but it's a plant-based source of essential amino acids with about 18 to 20 grams of protein in 100 grams of cacao powder. Not a great uh, ratio, but still it's got some. Cacao and its components have been linked to numerous health benefits. Health benefits like heart health. Human studies link chocolate consumption to improve cardiovascular health, in particular blood vessel function, blood pressure, and lower risk of heart disease. How does it do this? The cacao flavanols could support the production of nitric oxide in the cells lining the blood vessels, which help relax blood vessels and improve blood flow. Other health benefits like cognitive function, cacao and cacao derived products have also been linked to improved memory and thinking skills in a number of human trials. For example, a prospective study found that 41% lower risk of cognitive decline in participants aged 65 and above. 41% lower risk of cognitive decline. How? Well, the cacao flavanols could interact with signaling pathways that promote neurological function and brain connectivity and improved blood flow to the brain. 
Another health benefit is gut health. Emerging evidence points to the potential, quote, prebiotic effect of cacao because it contains various compounds, namely fiber and polyphenols, that can serve as nutrients for beneficial gut microbes. In a trial, daily intake of 85% dark chocolate improved gut microbial composition and diversity. Daily intake of 85% dark chocolate. How much, you might ask? Studies used a variety of doses, so we still kind of need to determine the amount needed to provide these health benefits. Somewhere between 25 to 40 grams of dark chocolate, 80, uh, 75% or more, seems recommended to get a standard dose of cacao flavonoids, 25 to 40 grams of dark chocolate. At our household, we buy a bar, a bunch of bars of dark chocolate. We put it in our freezer, and every night we uh, do two squares each, and we eat it with berries. So blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, um, some Greek yogurt in there if we're short of our protein goal, uh, maybe some magic spoon cereal if we're short of our protein goal, but it's a great combo for us. We love it. You might be asking, but what about sugar? What about sugar? Chocolate can't be good for you because of the sugar. It's important to remember that not all chocolate is created equal. Cacao-derived products come in a diverse range. We can't just group all chocolates as, quote, health-promoting because many of these products are low in cacao and super high in added sugar and fat. So think like milk chocolate or anything that you probably buy your kids for Easter. Like, not all chocolate is created equal. You got to look for the high cacao content. We actually do 95% in our household. Let's talk about some tasty tips. What are three qualities of a healthy dark chocolate? Number one, high cacao content. We've said it already. Opt for dark chocolate with a higher percentage of cacao solids above 75% to get more beneficial plant compounds from the cacao beans. High cacao. Number two, minimal ingredients. A high quality dark chocolate bar will have cacao or something like cacao mass or cacao liqueur and cacao butter at the top of the list. Look for minimal ingredients, high fiber, and low sugar content. Number three, no extra ingredients. Get those extra ingredients out of here. Avoid artificial flavors and additives. Things like palm oil or kernel oil, uh, things that are used as a substitute for cacao butter. You have to really know that just like wine, just like coffee, a quality dark chocolate is is a symphony of quality ingredients. It's expert craftsmanship. It's made with love. It has unique flavors. Experiment. If you're not used to the stronger flavors, start with a lower percentage and then gradually increase. And then you can try different products to find your favorite flavor profile. Dark chocolate can be anything ranging from fruity to floral. Not necessarily all are bitter. You can also pair it with complementary flavors like raspberries, cherries, kiwi, or even things like coconut or nut butter. Take a moment to just appreciate and, and love the taste. Let it melt in your mouth. One of the reasons we love chocolate is for the textural change from solid to creamy as it melts on the tongue and releases this fatty film. Take your time to enjoy it. Engage your senses. Let it sit there and melt on your tongue and appreciate the intricate notes that dance across your palate. A huge hack for people that struggle with uh, late night sweet cravings is to just take one square of dark chocolate and put it in your mouth and resolve to not chewing it. Let it melt in your mouth. And that might be enough to help curb and, and subside those sweet cravings that you might get late at night. And lastly, to conclude this episode, what I'm going to do is in the description of this episode, I'm going to include a recipe uh, from the Doctor's Kitchen podcast. The Doctor's Kitchen podcast is amazing uh, with Dr. Rupi Aujla. He has a recipe called Orange Zested Chocolate Bark with Berries. You got to check out this recipe. It's going to be delicious. So please check out that recipe in the description of this episode. And definitely check out The Doctor's Kitchen with Dr. Rupi Aujla. That's a great podcast. He has some great content. He has even a newsletter that you can subscribe to. I definitely recommend that. So let's get on that dark chocolate train, friends. It is good and it is good for you. And that's it. 
my friends, for this episode. Thank you so much for joining me on this Fuel Up Friday episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Share your knowledge that you gained with your friends and family and hold each other accountable. If you enjoy this content, it really does help a ton if you could post on your social media stories a screenshot of this episode and include one takeaway that you learned and make sure that you tag me and share your journey. It's a nice non-cost way to support this podcast. Tag me at living the dream underscore podcast or at coach Damien underscore SD and let us know how this episode benefited you. Let us know what we missed. Let us know what we got wrong. Tell us how you have included dark chocolate into your lifestyle. We want to know. Message us if you have any suggestions or tips that would help your Living the Dream team that we can discuss on future episodes. I'll be right here with you working on making us stronger, happier, and healthier humans. Until next time, friends, keep living the dream.